So, hi, I'm Takashi. Um, usually I'm doing the stuff to yeah, make a sound working or breaking, but uh, I casually also main, have been maintaining the OpenSUSE kernel from the 42 uh, until 43. Maybe I must have yeah, smoked something bad to take that role. In any way, that's why I, so this time I would like to show some something about kernel, but um, this is not so technical thing, just, but rather um, presenting the processing. So it's, yeah, just sit and relax <laughs> and here, listen to what I said. Um, so this is outline. Um, now I will show some basic development process of the Linux kernel and also what we have built for now, until now, for the OpenSUSE Leap 42 uh, series and the current one, the OpenSUSE Leap 15.0, and what can be in the future, so that we discuss it later. So the first thing is uh, how we develop the kernel. And this particularly belong also describing about upstreaming and downstreaming. And Linux kind of version. Um, I think you all people running a Linux desktop and you know which kernel you were running on your laptop. Um, usually it's just dash, you name dash r command. It shows the kernel version like this, 4.4.120-45-default. And what this string means, well, that's First, 4.4 is Linux kernel version, and 4.4.120 is a stable kernel. And this part belongs to upstream, and the rest are what we do. So, for example, the package release number and the kernel flavor. So, what this each of them means, that's where we'll see. Um, the upstream development is something like that. So. Many people, so literally thousand people, contribute the kernel patches and they are evaluated, reviewed, and merged in each subsystem or sub subsystem trees. And they are eventually going up to the one, one unique tree that is a Linux tree that is managed by Linus Torvalds himself. And strictly speaking, this is the only pure upstream tree. And yeah, sometimes we often see that other trees, like the subsystem, sub subsystem trees, as also upstream. But strictly speaking, this is upstream. And Linux released a new Linux kernel version at for each um, at this time for nine to ten weeks period. That is about two and a half months. And um, basically, bug fixes are applied only on top of the current development. That means if you get a bug in the pre previous release and you need to wait for two and a half months, it's a long time um, for that. So, great KH stand up and or other people. So, they try to backport the fixes and apply to the old trees. So specifically, the regular stable tree is only for the previous release kernel. Uh, for example, um, currently Linux tree is um, developing 4.17 kernel, and that means that we have, we received the stable kernel update only for 4.16. And once after 4.17 is released, then its stable tree also switched to the 4.17. Then the Linux tree is going up to the 418 development. So that means um, the regular stable tree lifetime is also about two and a half or three months, including some tra transition week. But um, for many people, this short time life cycle of stable tree is also not enough. Um, that's why there are some also long term stable tree, LTS. Um, the example that I showed, uh, 4.4.120, this is a, one of the LTS kernel. So 4.4 is LTS kernel. That means uh, 
This is a 120th release of the Fallout 4 stable. So far, that is about upstream. Now it's a, a downstream. So that is us, OpenSUSE or SUSE. Um, as a downstream, we just take the upstream Linux tree or stable tree and package and put in the distribution to be used by users. That's our purpose. And we provide different kernel flavors. In this case, kernel flavors means just kernel configuration sets. So um, kernel default, this is what most of you just see on your desktop, laptop, whatever. It's a default configuration for users. But if you want some debugging for the kernel problem, you can use kernel debug flavor package. That enables many kernel configuration for the debugging stuff. Also, there are um, different kernel flavor for the um, VM virtual machines and reduce um, kernel config sets and so on. Also, um, there is a slight difference between OpenSUSE and SUSE Linux Enterprise kernels. Um, particularly, SLA kernel has a reduced set of kernel configurations so that the uh, enterprise distribution wants to concentrate only on a limited set of devices and the limited of the features. Uh, meanwhile, OpenSUSE provides almost full features and drivers provided by the upstream kernels. And also, the uh, SD kernel provides uh, live patching K by KGraph, while um, OpenSUSE provides uh, uh, the loading release following the, uh, the latest table tree by Tumbleweed. So there are small differences between them. So the, our kernel package policy is uh, very classic. Just putting Linux table and applying that whole bunch of patches on top of that. And this is managed by um, kind of cute style, series.conf and also patch, ta patch, uh, patch table. So this is on um, the kernel source package is something like that. Oh, is that too, too small? Okay, yeah, so you can see that series, uh, here is a series.conf. It's just list up the whole bunch of patches to be applied. So it defines the order which patches applied first and second, so on. And there are, oh. Oh, no. Uh, drivers, yeah. So that is a uh, including a patch. Just uh, because uh, we have many patches, they are packed in the table instead of putting the single patch in the and RPM source code. So this is a way how we manage. And one thing I would like to emphasize in the case of the kind of maintenance is we have a golden rule for patches, the upstream first. So that, what this means that we want each patch in the, included in a kernel package to be rebuilt, at least rebuilt, or from, taken from the upstream tree. And sometimes we have the report that, so please put this downstream some wild patch into our SUSE kernel package. But in most cases, the answer is, sorry, no. You cannot do that way. So the correct procedure for that is submit that patch to the upstream to be rebuilt and eventually to be merged in the upstream tree. Then we can backport the patch from upstream to our kernel. So without that, we had, in past, we had many quality problems. So this is for improving the quality and also uh, reducing uh, our maintenance load. And so recap, the kernel development in the upstream side, there are three different trees, Linux tree, stable tree, and stable LTS. 
in downstream in our side, we package there from the upstream and just making the industry and backport patches. And we have the upstream first loop. So, so far, this is a process. And what we have achieved by until now uh, by this. So uh, let's start from the OpenSUSE Deep 40.1. It's a trilogy, you know, kind of that. So starting from OpenSUSE Deep 40.21, which just we need to take a look at the early history. Even also the often the episode one to three is not so good, but it's it doesn't matter. So we had and before the OpenSUSE Deep, OpenSUSE 30.1, 30.1 Evergreen, and OpenSUSE 30.2, and they are based on three different kind of versions. So three dot, from 3.11 to 3.16. Now, after that, we had a great idea. Open the deep, the grand plan. And this is for um, and getting a better sustainable supported distribution. And that means to share that package with Suze Linux Enterprise. And the kernel is, a, of course, it's a core of the core package. Yes, we should. However, uh, at the time of OpenSUSE 40.1, that was a so corresponding SUSE Linux Enterprise version was SUSE Linux Enterprise 12 SP1, and that was based on 3.12 kernel still. And version before that was 3.16. So we had to, we would have to go back to the past. And more badly, 3.12 kernel missed many uh, new support for the new hardware, especially for the Intel Skylake. The support of the Skylake was completely missing in 3.12. That was the biggest problem. So then we decided to take a different approach. So take a um, lightly, so it's available 4.1 LTS kernel. So that's for the OpenCCD 40.21 kernel. So from this version, so from this distribution, I started maintenance of the kernel. And this is a own branch, not shared with SUSE Linux Enterprise and 4.1 LTS. And this is uh, maintained for 18 months. And patch, total number of patches about 1,000. Hmm. Well, no bats, no. And what happened in the OpenSUSE 40.1 kernels? So, um, because it is maintained individually from OpenSUSE uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise, this is another overhead. You have to apply the different fix if, for, for example, the security issue comes up. So, at each time, there is one another new branch to be fixed. So, this is uh, obviously an overhead. And also, we took 4.1 kernel because of Intel Skylake. However, Intel Skylake didn't work well with this, that kernel. And there was many crashes with this kernel, even though we backported many uh, patches after that. This is an unfortunate story, but it's life. And 4.1 kernel was also a really strange LTS kernel. Uh, I think it's because the Greg didn't take that, but uh, Sasha even got maintenance for, uh, for that one kernel. So that received only 30 to 9 uh, updates for 18 months. So that means uh, two updates per month. That's really few updates. So that was a 42 one. Now 40.2. Hey, that's better. And this version, we finally base on SLA 12 SP2 kernel. This is not exactly the same, but it's, the source code are exactly the same between SLA kernel and OpenSUSE Deep kernels. But OpenSUSE Deep kernel, as I mentioned earlier, 
um, has a different kernel configuration, enables more and more drivers than SDA kernel. So the kernel configuration is only difference between SDA kernel and the lib kernel on that version. And 40.2 lib uh, is um, taking uh, 4.4 LTS kernel, and that has been, has been maintained for 15 months. And the number of patches in the last release was over 8,000. Yeah, that's many numbers. And so observation of the 40.2. The maintenance cost of the lib kernel itself was very, very easy, cheap, because it's, yeah, it's free. <laughs> Everything comes from the Linux enterprise, actually. But uh, for me, it doesn't matter because I maintain also as a SUSE Linux enterprise. <laughs> but uh, from the OpenSUSE Lib perspective, it's very easy. And uh, Open Lib, because of the OpenSUSE Lib based on the SLA kernel, and SLA kernel has the very active development. So in the end, Lib kernel has received many, many patches. And the good news is that Skydeck support was finally stab stabilized on this OpenSUSE Lib 40.2. So after all, that version was very good. I would say that's not bad at all. So that on the history goes on, then we get OpenSUSE Lib 40.3. Okay, this version also again, uh, it's based on SUSE Linux Enterprise 12 SP3. And again, this time, the very same code as SLA kernel, but different kernel configurations. Yeah. And SP3 um, keeps still 4.4 LTS kernel. Although this release is, well, how many months is later than for, um, SP2? Well, one year or so. So that means this is a little bit old. And at that time, it's, there are already new, always new and new, you know, the hardware released. And specifically, for the graphics side, we have received uh, KB Lake, Intel Graphics, and MD GPU. And if we backport all these things to the Fallout 4 kernel, you would have to more than 5,000 patches on top of that. So we say, oh, that's too much. And so decided that another strategy, namely, we take a uh, DRM KMP. And KMP means kernel module package. And that allows, so this is a um, KMP is a one single RPM package. And that allows you to um, overload the car, so upgrade the kernel modules on top of the existing kernel. And the merit of the DRM KMP is that that's, that provides a whole updates of the uh, full graphics stack. And if you uninstall D this DRM KMP, it suddenly goes back whole things. So this is a safe kind of safety. If something gets broken, then you can uninstall KMP file. Then you go back to the original kernel stage. So that was another reason we took that approach. And that uh, OpenSUSE Lib 40.3 is still maintained. And the number of patches right now, guess what? <laughs> That's a crazy number, you know. <laughs> 21,000 patches. Um, for single package, and you know that we apply 21,000 patch patches at each time you build a RPM package. Ah, that's very crazy. And it's not only by patches; just also the coach changes are enormous. Um, as you can see, this is a diff stage. So open in OpenStage 40.3 kernels. Because of many backports, we get uh, yeah, about two millions of lines additional removal. Yeah. 
So the observation of, of deep 40.3 kernel. So again, maintenance cost is very, very cheap. It's we just borrowing the SD kernel. And SD kernel itself is very heavily patched 4.4 kernel. Um, unfortunately, SP3 kernel, because of the 4.4 kernel for more than two years back, um, it's slightly outdated. So in some parts that are still old and don't support kind of new hardware. For example, some wireless chips like Atelos 10K driver that's uh, not well supported and so on. Uh, for the graphics side, we provided the update by KMP. And this worked pretty well for the KB Lake and Sky Lake. However, for the older chip than Sky Lake, that was a really horrible result. Uh, 4.9 kernel from the Intel driver was uh, as, as got some regressions, and it, we couldn't recover from that. So, in the end, um, for the users with um, old laptops, then it's ad uh, advised to uninstall the MKMP. And this also, there is a conflict of DRM KMP with NVIDIA or AMD GPU, so external package. So DRM KMP is one good solution, but it's far from, far from, from perfect. That is a consequence. So the recap, so the leap 40.2, uh, 40.2 uh, 40 uh, trilogy. The first one is some kind of experiment for me too. And yeah, that was okay because I took up, so step, step, step it up as a maintainer newly, but I wouldn't do again. And 40.2, this is um, carrying from the um, Suzy Links Enterprise, and that was, it's good, stable, and one of the best releases. And 40.3, yes, the good point is that it's stable but outdated in some areas. And DRM KMP was good for the latest hardware, but bad for the old hardware. So that was a... So now from, um, from the past to the current and the future for the Leap 15.0. Um, Leap OpenSUSE Leap 15.0 kernel, um, I finally could slow that away and Eiji Kosina took over the maintenance ship. Thank you, Eiji. And this is again based on the SD15. That's, that is good. Again, so we have no maintenance overload of the um, OpenCD Deep kernel. And this is based on the 4.12.14 kernel. And the signing method is a slightly change that is signed by PKCS7. Then that means that, uh, it needs a different kind of the uh, package depends, dependency and so on. And one point to be emphasized is that 4.12 is no LTS kernel. That means 4.12.14 is a last version provided by upstream. And this time, so we decided, okay, we take all responsibilities. We do all backports by ourselves. Hey, great. How do we do that? Uh, so we deployed different things, and one thing is uh, a git fix script that is um, checking the upstream git commits and whether it should be backported by checking the fixes tag, and that's reported to each developer. You should backport that, check that, check that. And also we regularly watch 4.14, LTS kernel development and whether it's backportable to our kernel or not. So we regularly check that, but we are unfortunately still behind the four, the latest stable about maybe thousand patches missing, and we need to still evaluate which should have been backported, which 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 can be ignored, and so on. 
and 50 zero kernel starts, it's already 12,000 patches. Hey, that's not so small. <laughs> ah, yeah, nice start now. <laughs> so that, oh, wait. Okay, um, so why so many patches? And would it have been better with 4.14 LTS kernel if we would ha have taken that? Maybe yes, but maybe not so much. Um, for example, if you look at that chart, the number of stable patches are so small in comparison with the total number of backport patches. That means that most of the patches we backported are also the request from third parties or our partners for the um, drivers and features to follow the very, very latest stage. So that also the patches will also grow up more. So maybe that's not so. 4.14 wouldn't have helped so much. And this is again a question for the 15.1 deep kernel. And 15.1 deep will be based on the SA15 SP1 kernel. Then again, this will be for the 12 kernel in the next year. So that we far behind from the, um, yeah, the latest stance. So that, or we take the LTS kernel, but then we have a more overhead. So this has to be discussed. And um, okay, this is a recap again, 15.0. This. Well, the basic concept kept as a 42, but no LTS. We are responsible for our all backports. And then for 15.1 deep, I don't know. It's still open question. So that's all about the kernel. I hope that it's yeah, in time. <laughs> so if you have any questions. Um, especially in the in the uh, ARM community of OpenSUSE, we have the problem that uh, some boards are not enabled in the SLEE kernel because uh, basically there's no use case for SLEE for that. And that leads to the fact that uh, OpenSUSE Leap is not working good enough on this board, so not working at all. So I, I remember there were some discussions if of using a newer kernel for OpenSUSE Leap, <laughs> like uh, latest stable kernel. What mm -hmm. do you think about this? Yeah, that was a, the question. For the Deep 15.1, it's especially that question. And yeah, again, the maintenance of the another branch is a problem, if, especially for the security updates. For example, once again, when SpectreSync comes up, you have to patch each of the branch. And so who is responsible for that individual branch if we take the LTS? That's the question too. So from the our side, we want to reduce the number of branches as much as possible. But also, the, so this is a question of, of balance. If the Features are really so many, so many, so many features are missing. Then we have to switch more or less. But yeah, so that's a very open question, and we need to evaluate carefully. Hello, repeat. Leap 15 has a very big backport of Intel DRM drivers, yeah. but no such big backport from AMD GPU. Why? Oh, that's very simple answer, because we didn't get any requests for that. For Intel, we, request, we, we got a request from Intel from, from part, as a partner for their upgrade for supporting uh, Gen 10 
graphics generations. But from MD, we didn't get requests. If we got a request, and we, then we would have evaluated whether it's bug portable or not, and maybe we did that, but we didn't do that. So um, I think this is also possible from the OpenSUSE Leap user side. Any OpenSUSE Leap user can of, um, create a feature request by the uh, page opensuse.org, and that can be evaluated, and we can include the feature if requested. Yeah, so the important thing is request before the release. After release is, of course, difficult. Yeah. Okay, okay. Then, thank you. <laughs> Good.